There we go. Hey, welcome back. Um, so today what we're aiming to do is integrate uh, the Watkins anti-chess uh, opening tree server into uh, the fishnet stockfish AI server that's the backbone that does the analysis uh, for Lee chess. So what's the point of doing all this? Um, it's twofold. Well, actually threefold, I guess. Um, one, to save on CPU power on uh, Lee chess production servers. I'm not sure if that's actually going to work or not, but uh, that's another thing. Um, two, to um, guarantee that we're providing better analyses for uh, anti-chess games on Lee chess. And uh, three, to pave the way for more scalable solutions for just analysis in general. Um, so that's that's the real motivation as far as I'm concerned. Um, that, you know, use the tool that's appropriate for the job and that Stockfish is often that tool. But my goodness, when there are other excellent tools out there, use those too. So, oh, well, maybe there's a fourth motivation for me to learn things. I guess that's always out there. If I weren't learning anything, and if this weren't any fun, um, or if parts of it ceased to be fun, I'd probably just move on to more fun uh, or better learning sorts of projects. But for now, for today, we're going to uh, focus on integrating the Watkins anti-chess solution. Um, you may or may not have seen it. Uh, Watkins anti-chess uh sure i guess this will be a good primer as any um actually so we could look at this on lee chess um feel free to go to lee chess do an analysis of an anti-chess game and you'll see these moves show up in the lower right uh courtesy of oh where where's his name here there it is niklas He's the one who submitted this contribution to Lee Chess uh, in terms of what shows up in the opening explorer. Um, and so there's an API endpoint for the server. Uh, it shows you that this wins in 4 million nodes. Oh, I, I can zoom that in. Awesome. So yeah. Um, B6 loses in 4.49 million nodes or something. C5 loses in 22 million. You can read the numbers better than I can, but some moves are prove all the moves are proven lost, but some of the proofs are more complicated as designated by this number here. Um, and this is, I think, by way of proof number or proof number squared search, PN or PN squared. Um, which are just algorithms that tally up uh, how complex various subtrees are. Uh, and the terminal condition of a tree is that the final position is solvable in a million nodes or fewer or less. I don't know which is grammatically appropriate, but so uh, we see that if you want to lose as quickly as possible, pick the move at the bottom of this list. You want to put up the most resistance, pick one near the top. Um, so this is excellent for humans to view and does not at all factor into the AI's ability to play anti-chess against you. And that's what I'm trying to do is both for analysis purposes when you hit the do computer analysis button at the end of the game, um, as well as um, when you're um, playing against the AI, it all that should reference the solution the same way that you're able to explore it here. Um, I suggested this to the other developers and they say, yeah, go ahead and do it. I'm like, oh, right, I'm gonna have to do it. Okay, sure, whatever, we'll do it, we'll try. Uh, it sounded pretty imposing at the time and I have made good progress on it. Um, so, I don't think I have it working yet. Uh, 
Let's see, I don't have any local changes. Um, how do I demonstrate what I've done? Uh, GitHub, we're going to look at my fishnet that I just put up there in the cloud. By the cloud, I mean GitHub. Um, oops, that's not it. I want to look at the new branch I just made called Watkins. Um, one commit ahead of Nicholas's version. Um, so I added the endpoint on my machine. Bearing in mind, this is all work in progress, so feel free to reconfigure and figure out the right way to deploy it and all that jazz. I don't care how you deploy it. Um, for my own testing, I use a depth of cutoff of 21 just to keep my Fibonacci numbers. Uh, I use these move times also. Just keep things consistent with how I've always been testing until somebody can motivate me to use the actual official Leech S numbers, which, whatever, I don't care. They use theirs, I'll use mine. It's my instance for my development copy, I do what I want. Um, that I didn't even intend to check that in. I'll revert that before I submit some sort of pull request. Um, so, yeah, what I'm trying to do here is uh, access the Watkins endpoint that's on the same server as the fishnet client. <laughs> okay, well, okay, so there's the Leechus server, right? The Leechus server has access to a fishnet server. Um, and usually they're hosted on the same machine, I guess. I'm not sure. They don't have to be, I guess. Uh, it's all up to leech us in terms of how they want to deploy and configure and run all that. But I assume that Fishnet and the production server are on the same machine, but what do I know? Um, either way, that Fishnet server connects to the Fishnet clients. And what I'm saying is that if you have a Fishnet client, which is also running on a server, that that server could be running the Watkins anti-chess server. Um, Again, there's probably better network topologies. Um, you could probably have Leechus itself try to integrate this sort of solution so I don't have to do it in Fishnet. Um, I don't really care at this point what the best way is. Either way, this is going to result in less wasted CPU cycles um, by uh, Stockfish trying to recalculate what is already knowledge. Um, such as like E3, C5, Bishop B5 is already a uh, win or a loss or whatever. Um, I don't know very much about anti-chess, um, but I'm just saying like if we have the knowledge, there's no reason for to make Stockfish go in circles trying to compute the same thing as what the known answer is. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and before I like go through all the code that I had to change, because that's no fun, you don't care about all the coding details. Um, probably spent a half hour or something putting this together. Uh, probably spent a few... Um, then beyond that, it took me maybe 10 minutes to figure out how to appropriately put my changes up there in the cloud. Uh, no big deal. Um, I wonder... Uh, so what I really ought to do... In fact, here's the log of changes. What I ought to do before putting that up in the cloud is undo the some of the changes at near the top of the file that could confuse other people. It might be appropriate for myself, but um, yeah, you see, I created a oh come on, git branch dash. I can't type with my finger injured like this. Um, so yeah, it's tempting to list. I added this uh, Watkins uh, branch, and unfortunately that contains a change that I didn't expect it would. Um, so let me go back. Uh, get reset head minus one. Uh, vim fishnet.py. Actually, wait, get diff. And then we're going to put these move times back. 
fishnet.py. So we're going to put those back to the way they used to be so that other people looking aren't confused by said change. That's better. Um, default endpoint, default Watkins endpoint, etc., etc. Looks better. Uh, get status. Are these ready to commit? Get add builds. No, I didn't intend to change build stockfish. I just intended to change uh, fishnet.py. What was it that it said had changed? I thought there were two files, fishnet.py and, oh, okay, yeah, I'd never checked that in. I never intended to check that in. That's just my local build for Stockfish, which says don't go out to the server to go get the Stockfish code. I already have it. You're going to go in loops confusing yourself if you're both the person developing and releasing the code and then you're getting it from some external server to come back to you. Um, and the worst part is that I have local development copy, which I don't want to overwrite with the production copies, so whatever. Uh, get add fishnet.py. Oh, what was my commit message just a second ago? Uh, I think it was Watkins work in progress or something to that effect. Watkins, this should say Watkins integration work in progress. Uh, get commit. Watkins uh, solution integration work in progress. Uh, for those who don't know it, there we go. Get push, force push this to my repo. Um, Watkins, there we go. Whoops, there we go. And now I should, well, I guess you have to trust me that I pushed it up into the cloud. Um, get remote V shows you where all the things are at. Um, so if I go to my version of this repo, uh, we've still got the Watkins branch. And there's my commit message, anti-chess solution integration work in progress. Okay, see, trusted me. It, I didn't have to go through that exercise, but I did it anyway. Um, so, that said, where, when and where did I leave off with this? Oh, actually, no, the commit message, the commit time won't show me that. Um, uh, MSLRT, does this tell me when I was doing any of this? January 29th does not sound accurate. Um, I want to say it was a month ago. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how to prove that. Maybe it was, it couldn't have been November 2nd, could it? I didn't put anything in here about Watkins, nor should I. Although that would actually make sense to put it there, but whatever. Um, whatever, so... Um, yeah, demo.sh is what I had running at the beginning of the stream. Uh, let's put that back in my home directory, because that has nothing to do with Fishnet. And that would just confuse other developers if they ended up with that loading screen I was showing you. Uh, all right, so uh, tail no hop. What's there? Oh, right. All kinds of uh, stockfish testing I was doing while trying to make various enhancements that just flat out didn't work. Um, so anyway, uh, I suppose I don't need that here. I've got so much going on. Um, oh, that's new. Okay, so I'm not familiar with the Travis configuration stuff. Uh, what's tricky? I don't understand that. Mm, 
I've sufficiently confused myself as to what's going on with that. It says Crazy House, so I must have been doing something important. Um, bummer. Uh, Test.txt is something I created the other day, which I don't need, because now, um, uh, now there's a bench command that can execute these tests for all variants. Um, so I don't need to have one for a particular variant. Well, I could always make a shell script to do that sort of thing, but whatever. Actually, no, the text file was fine. I'm just overreacting and trying to clear stuff up because there's so much clutter. Um, Get status shows me that everything in the world's still being modified. Oh, I forgot to add .git modules to my last commit. So I'm going to do some more black magic. Um, commit, amend, write, and then we want to force push that. Again, you really don't want to use force push this often because other people might be trying to use your code. Um, the only advantage is that, like, I'm not fragmenting my changes. Um, as long as I'm in this very pre-alpha state, then it doesn't matter that I'm doing bad practices in terms of Git usage. Um, Whatever helps me be most effective before I share with other people is fine. Arguably, by putting the code on GitHub, I am actually sharing it. Um, I don't care to argue that. Because nobody's looking at that particular project anyway. Not yet. So, let's see. Okay, now that I've got like most of the clutter out of the way, I say as I still got like 10 other things here. There's only so much I can do. Like, what's temp? Is there anything of value? Oh my goodness. Um, I was intending to do some sort of AI tournament, and I put all that stuff in temp. And I guess that's staying here for a while. Uh, I'm not going to clean all that up just now. Um, so let's take a look at Fishnet. Uh, I've been delaying this long enough. Um, so I introduced... So there's the go command, which um, is part of Fishnet. I'm sorry, the go m function, method, uh, whatever you call things in Python. I think it's called a function, pretty sure about that, but um, so I'm saying if we're doing anti-chess and we're doing analysis, um, then make some attempt, <clears throat> sorry, make some attempt to use the Watkins solution. Print out that we're using Watkins and print out the solution that you just found. Um, and if the position is solved, if best move is not equal to null, find out some way to echo that back to the LeechS server. Uh, as it stands right now, this is just an extra step that's being done every step of the analysis phase. Uh, so we're actually using extra computing cycles to possibly provide redundant information. Assuming this integrates at all. Um, so I added the go function, or the go function was there, I added some parameters to it such that I could expose whatever needed to be exposed here for me to um, do a post request to the Watkins Endpoint API server um, and parse the response um, and then return that response in whatever form it comes back in. Um, or, um, I guess, if it just doesn't return, return none whatever. Um, so this is the form that... okay so we first initialize the best move to none um, and up here when we're calling the Watkins solution and getting the response back um, ideally what we'd want to do 
Yeah, we start using spaces, thank goodness. Uh, what we want to do is figure out a way to set the best move. Um, and then I guess return it. Sure, why not? Um, yeah. That seems okay. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with all this, but um, the appropriate first step would be getting it to return something and then be able to print out whatever it returned. Alright, so let's play a game against the AI or import a game with the uh, involving the AI. Just basically have some anti-chess game that's worthy of analysis and then analyze it. Um, and it's during said analysis that the fishnet log should demonstrate that we're making some attempt to contact the Watkins endpoint. Um, alternatively, I could just take out this check here. Yeah, let's just do it this way. Simplify our testing, not have to do computer analysis. Just, you know, whenever we're doing anti-chess, do this redundant step. Uh, we can add that back on later for analysis. For actual play, you don't want, I guess for, yeah, for actual play, you don't want the AI consulting the book for every possible AI level. Maybe for, well, maybe AI level 8, but even then, people probably consider that cheating if it's just using the solution every time, so that's no fun. I'll make sure to revert this, um, to only do this during analysis as opposed to during gameplay. Um, let me add a comment. Um, for analysis, uh, use Watkins anti chess server service server uh, solution. Doesn't really matter whether it's a server, service, etc. Uh, I guess uh, I can even go so far as to say not play. Already known solution. Uh, to do revert on next line. There we go. Um, so then we run fishnet. You probably missed it there. Fishnet. Distributed Stockfish Analysis, analysis for LeeChess.org. And it checks your configuration, etc., etc. Dumps out everything you ever want to know and you ever would never want to know, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, look, we got... So this must be detecting from my LeeChess instance that it wants a move from the AI. Um, and there's an exception trying to uh, access the Watkins endpoint. Unicode object has no attribute conf on line 465. All right, so we're going to kill uh, fishnet, go to line 465, and saying that Unicode object has no attribute conf. Now, is that true? I'm pretty sure conf is supposed... Oh, so... Okay, I guess that's the thing. Is that self here refers to a different thing than self in worker refers to. Um, where else are we using self here? Is it just there? So what I actually need is conf rather than self. I think what I changed earlier had exposed self, and that was the wrong thing to expose. Um, because these functions don't aren't self-referential. Um, so solve, and then now we do need to provide uh, configuration there. 
Uh, where are we calling go from? Go is going to be now go self.conf. This is now going to be go self.conf. There we go. Yeah, that was just me getting thoroughly confused last time about how Python works with refer with references to the this object you would say in Python, or I guess you'd you say the this keyword in C. Um, in Python, they use the uh, noun self, which is okay. But I got confused about how what you're passing around and how that all works. Um, let's see, does this work any better? Looking up, okay, I got your stockfish. Started two stockfish workers. All right, get me a move. All right, that failed. Global name path is undefined. Okay. Uh, 465. Now, what is path supposed to be again? Um, so Watkins endpoint, um, get Watkins endpoint needs the same way that get endpoint, um, which gets the URL for the Leechus server. This is going to use a configuration and use sub equals something for validating an endpoint. I'm assuming that whatever this path is is supposed to be an HTTP URL or a path. Um, huh, it's been too long since I've looked at this, unfortunately. Uh, URL join. Let me try to parse this. This is very succinct. URL join, validate endpoint, configuration get um, using property Watkins endpoint, which I introduced. Closed scope of configure get, closed scope of um, validate endpoint. So this paren way out here. All right, these match up. Um, so we're joining using sub here. Hmm, I'm not familiar with URL parse. Um, let me just look at how get endpoint is used. Um, okay, so... Wow. Oh, no way, so, okay, the conf aspect of this says what domain and what what's the first part of the URL path says what path on that URL should we follow okay um, 465 so here is there any path for me to assemble for this like if I'm just attempting to access the Watkins server um, do I need a path? I mean, I'm sure I do. Um, path equals blank, which is wrong, 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 but let's see. I look into the anti-chess server code. Um, how do I test this? Read me. Yep, 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 so you install all the stuff. Okay, and then here's how you access it. You, uh, you have the server, which I guess is tablebaseleechess.org, or in my case, it's my own local server. Um, the path is Watkins and parameters. I'm sorry, data is the message body data to provide in the message. Uh, so that data is this literal string, E2, E3, etc. So the path is Watkins. That's the entire path, uh, I think. And we're going to find out just how wrong we are in a minute. Um, get Watkins endpoint. Oh, 
Hopefully that's right. Um, if not, whatever. Uh, obviously, I'm just using this as the data for the in fact, you know, let's not make this configurable uh, with a variable because the variable would only be used in a single place. Don't repeat yourself or don't make this overly abstract when not necessary to do so. All right, so we're going to contact my local server, which is defined in conf as my Watkins endpoint. Um, and use the path Watkins and provide the data e2, e3, etc. And then take our entire response, return that, and then down here we print out our entire response from the server. Um, note I do have the moves. I can generate actual move strings, but I'm trying to get the proof of concept going first. Um, so we write our test and then um, see what we get. Okay, local variable request referenced before assignment. Um, um, wait, where? How? Uh, 404 not found, resource not found. Okay. Um, anti chess, read me, etc. Uh, so my test, uh, do I have a test.sh out there already? I do. Okay. Watkins.sh. Watkins test.sh is going to be just this. Um, okay, now that I didn't mean to reach out to that endpoint. We can use the one that's in my fishnet. That pi, uh, but we've proven that the client works. Let's take my server, um, substitute my server in, which really should not be a very far round trip, honestly. Oops, uh, the path I need here at the end is Watkins, as we just established. Uh, an unexpected TLS packet was received. Okay, can we do this like non secure? Okay, yeah, if we do this non secure, this works. Um, so, uh, I'm not going to deal with the securing aspects of this just yet. Not if I don't have to. Um, so Python Watkin or Python Fishnet. All right. Request a move. Uh, 404 resource not found. What's the deal this time? 673 613. Request referenced before assignment. Uh, how did I break this? So, let's comment out a few lines of code. Um, try this again. Okay, that worked. So it's definitely these lines of code that did something. Um, so something about a request has to be initialized, self.work, <laughs> anybody have bright ideas? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so yeah, we see our move got picked. Oh, oh my goodness. Are you serious? Wow. I found a bug. And it wasn't my bug. Holy crap. Okay. Um, now, granted, I shouldn't have done it this way, but... Um, 
I mean, something I coded as wrong, but okay, the error handling isn't perfect, so that's fine. Um, okay, wow. Yeah, in fact, while I'm at it, um, let me, well, okay, you don't have to run this code, never mind. Let me show you the error again, because that's what you're asking for. Um, here, I'm going to play a move, get back a move. Uh, so, this is the error message. Um, so, admittedly, what I'm doing is something really pushing the limits of, um, I don't know, like I'm, I'm reusing some code as opposed to defining my own methods for doing posts and etc. Um, yeah, it's possible that these 404 to the Watkins... Wait, I'm even using a wrong URL there. I'm intending to use my Watkins URL as opposed to this non-existent fishnet Watkins thing. So I'm using the wrong URL. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, and obviously giving a bad, providing a bad body there as well. But it, yeah, it is causing everything to tank, so I, I didn't appropriately catch this. Uh, I just kind of freaked out looking at this because honestly my last effort, which I spent, I said a half hour, it might have been an hour, I don't remember. Um, it's probably an hour. I just kept getting hit with all kinds of Python exceptions. And now this is actually a really reasonable Python exception in comparison to everything I've been seeing so far. Um, so I don't think it's... I'm pretty sure it's not anything in your code. It's that I need to handle the case where on my client I've set up a Watkins server and that Watkins server is not responding. In this case because I used the wrong URL. but. I need to uh, add error handling. I'm pretty sure that's not a bug. This is just new code that I've added. I think I tricked you. Um, I don't know how to do error handling in Python. There's like raising exceptions and catching stuff and I... Uh, I don't know the best way to do it. Um, <laughs> Watkins endpoint. Wait. Validate endpoint. Is validate endpoint generic such that I can use it with my Watkins endpoint? Or is validate endpoint something um oh here we are return default endpoint yeah maybe i do need a validate watkins endpoint yeah i can always clean this stuff up later or we can always clean it up later i don't know the best way to code everything initially um so i'm being more verbose than necessary go that's fine so um, but that doesn't handle the issue that I'm doing things uh, in a way that's not trapping that exception properly um, so let's go back to the definition of this function um, validate endpoint, that is. Um, yeah, nowhere am I checking it. Is this the production endpoint? Nor should I. Um, because this is all running client side at the moment. Um, uh, 
Okay. Uh, where was I doing this? I think this is somewhere in the middle of the program. Uh, def solve. Uh, so get Watkins endpoint. Uh, it's going to call validate Watkins endpoint. Chooses the Watkins endpoint configuration. If any is defined, oh, okay, that's what was happening. If anything's defined in a file saying what Watkins endpoint to use, use that. Otherwise, use the default, but the default was the leeches URL. Um, <coughs> so now the default is the Watkins URL. Um, <coughs> Um, all right, let's just try this again. Uh, Watkins. Okay, we got a HTTP response instance at blah. Great, now I get to figure out how to decode that. Um, let's see, as response. Where's an example of, oh, okay. Um, so here's how you do try and accept and all that fun jazz. So I guess let's start by copying this big old block of code. Uh, 695 going up to here. So that's uh, 65 lines of code. I'm going to copy that all into def solve. Um, I don't know how to unindent 65 lines of code. That's annoying. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm probably not going to need all this anyway. Um, should be server error, dead engine errors, for example, I'm not using. Um, because that doesn't pertain to HTTP communication. Um, if in doubt, restart the engine is absolutely not what I'm doing. Um, anything else here that I want to do? Okay. Yeah, so all I'm trying to do is just my HTTP stuff. Specifically, something more like this. Uh, access Watkins solution and or query. Query is a better word than access. Uh, Watkins solution endpoint. Um, seems appropriate. Um, then we'll have to figure out how to parse that, etc, etc. Um, not going to do multiple tries, I don't think. So none of this sleeping weight. Well, irrespective of how I choose to respond to this, um, like, I'm not going to wait uh, at all there. HTTP client errors. Do, do, do. Not going to see any of that. Uh, client error, I don't know. That's probably generic. Again, I'm not going to do any sleeping here. Um, other exceptions do stuff, but no sleeping. Instead, um, if we failed to return a move before this line of code, then we just return none. Um, oh, OK, cool. No, I, I honestly don't think it was any fault of your API. Even if you're choosing to make your 
I'm sorry, of your uh, library, even if you're choosing to make it more resilient and easier to use, which is cool and admirable and all that. Um, let me indent this. Okay, we don't need that, don't need that. Uh, so this is the appropriate scope for all this stuff. Whoops, not there. This one, okay. It's inconsistent. Um, uh, figure out the best way to indent some of this stuff. I probably don't want to be causing as many side effects as I'm still causing here. Uh, I could probably do without most of this. Uh, client error, we're not going to be backing off. Wait, what? Backing off. Oh, T. T must be the time. I don't need a time for a next back off because I'm not backing off. I'm not canceling the job. That's better. Um, okay, yeah, we don't need the next back off, um, we're not canceling the job, we don't need the time, uh, exception in Watkins, uh, worker. Sure, sure. Uh, so what I'm working on is trying to integrate the Watkins anti-chest solution. Sorry I tabbed over there. I thought I had it readily accessible. Um, but I'm working on trying to integrate a solution for the anti-chest uh, variant into the analysis um, uh, library, uh, Fishnet, um, which uh, Niklas uh, created and maintains um, and that allows LeeChess to have a collection of servers that handle uh, game analyses um, and uh, appropriately distribute the workload um, in order to provide pretty much um, not real time but very uh, very prompt offline analyses that are quickly made available um, um, as well as just a uh, way a means of multiple AIs I guess they these days it's all stockfish we at some point were using other engines as well I think notably Sunsetter um, but yeah it's just a way for, for AIs to perform uh, analysis and um, to do gameplay for LeechUs and now I'm trying to integrate the Watkins solution into all of this so that um, Stockfish doesn't have to calculate the solution from the start position every time um, so I'm just reusing some code um, trying to make the pieces that are there work better together with one another. Okay, I think that's fine. Oh, json.dumps request. Um, that isn't actually the request. Oh, wait, no, I had, hmm. I'm not familiar with JSON dumps. I think that says dump the contents of request as a string. Um, but here, request is going to be um, uh, something simple like what we've got here. So there's no need to do a json.dumps on it. It's already a string. Let's 
So that's what I get for looking at the error handling code, and now I better understand it. Um, yeah, it sounds like a lot of work, although compared to the work that people have put in, um, making every one of these pieces of the puzzle, as well as to compare to the work that is going to happen if I don't do this, and people are going to complain that Stockfish isn't finding the right moves. Um, it makes a lot more sense to do this. Let's just get this done. Um, oh, we're not going to get back a 204 response. Uh, okay. Uh, don't need that, don't need that. Data equals decode the response as UTF-8. Um, got Watkins response. Um, and because I've got it there, I don't need to be echoing that down here. Um, All right, I think things are finally starting to come together, much to my surprise. I am becoming a proficient Python developer. That's scary. Um, have I forgotten anything, or am I ready to let this test again? Uh, I think I identified correctly all the, oh, hang on, this is not indented properly. Uh, Python will complain about these things. It does, Python does try to be helpful. Um, I mean, this looks good. Probably one of these things, or more than one, are still mail formatted somehow. I don't know if there's a way, I should be using an IDE, although IDEs, even they aren't smart enough to figure out, do you have an integer, do you have a string, do you have another string, and is this all formatted properly? Um, I mean, do I have too many arguments, do I have too few arguments? I've never seen an IDE point that out based on a printf um, command, or in this case a debug command, but whatever. Um, I don't need to specify the logging instance. Eh, this looks fine. Well, maybe I do need to specify the logging instance. Uh, it'll tell me in a minute. Um, I probably don't need to wrap this anymore because there's not as much to be wrapped. Um, HTTP server error. So we get the status and reason code, which that is the contents of a HTTP response and error. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I think I've got everything. So in, in terms of skeleton code, um, so next steps would be to parse the response that's given from here, um, produce the best move out of it, uh, And then, uh, well, one thing at a time. Uh, info best move is none. We don't need to return response. We want to return info best move. I think that completes our skeleton. So I should be able to run this. Um, let's back up a move, make a move, and see, okay, or it did play a move, I didn't see anything logged. Where do I go to find the log? Let's play another move. Um, 
Yeah, I have to go look at my configuration file to figure out where the log is, which is okay. It did successfully play moves. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the config file. Okay. Um, So, somewhere, I'm not sure if I should expect this logging.debug to do anything. Um, turn on debug or logging or something. Let's go back here. Oh, import logging. Logging is a library. Okay. Okay, cool. That makes sense. So, um, Increase verbosity. Okay, that makes sense. There's usage there. It's good to have. Okay, that's why I'm so accustomed to seeing um, so much in the way of logging. Uh, it's because whenever I'm developing, exceptions and errors are always happening because my code is that flawed, at least during development. <laughs> um, and yeah, having such logging is immensely useful. Huh, I wonder what that building noise is. It sounds like somebody's hitting a hammer into something. Anyway, um, yeah, so I can do Python, uh, this dash v, and then vbv, etc. Okay, that's pretty verbose. Two v's is still pretty damn verbose. One v should probably suffice for what I'm doing. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe I have to put another one in there. I can do two. That's cool. Um, Let's back up a move. Give me a move. Oh, okay, cool. There we are. Got Watkins' response. So, the Watkins response was, has a body, which is JSON. Um, looks like I'm going to have to figure out the appropriate way to use uh, the JSON library such that I could pick any winning move out of the response. Probably pick the, well, for black, well, okay. What am I doing? Oh, right. Before I even delve too far into this, uh, the message that I sent to the server was e3, c5, bishop b5. Um, these are black responses to bishop b5. Uh, so for black, you want to pick something in the top few moves here. You really do. Probably the top one, which is the most complex solution. Although, humans might already know that one. So against a human opponent, don't always pick the first one, but whatever. We're talking about an engine here. Um, I'm not sure the best way to handle this, frankly. Um, Stockfish does have ways to semi-randomize moves against human opponents, I think, but um, in terms of analysis of what's the best move and what's a bad move, uh, all moves are lost, so they're all bad. 
um, but some are more bad than others, like d6 loses pretty trivially, as is d5. Anyway, this is a learning experience. I don't need to figure out the right algorithm at the moment. Um, what would be useful is next if I could construct this request out of the moves list, um, and then get back an appropriate response and parse it correctly. Now, the game I'm playing, the AI is actually playing the white pieces. Um, so maybe the parsing the response correctly while I'm still... In fact, what happens if I do um, Watkins test and we try this um, without bishop b5 there? Okay, we get back just one move. That's good to know. So even if we have a strategy of pick the first one or pick the last one or something, that'll all be okay. Um, meanwhile, um, if you pick something that's completely out of the realm of the solution, um, like d2, d3, um, that's going to result in... You still get a response back. Game over is false. And the moves are empty. But that's not part of the solution. And the reason that's not part of the solution is because that move loses. Um, but okay, it'll tell you like if you're still in the solution or not. Um, by way of, is moves empty? Um... It does not make any effort to attempt to transpose back into the solution. That's completely understandable. Um, so, JSON dot. Oh, JSON dot load s. Okay, so you can load the data. Um, we're going to say, uh, let's say just move equals attribute of moves, which is probably wrong. Um, oh no, no, moves is a top level attribute. Um, um, And then I could say moves uh, sub zero. Um, I'm getting closer to parsing that correctly. Um, in fact, um, so I don't get so overwhelmed by all the logging. Let me, instead of doing the logging.debug for my own code, let me just put printf here. Or print. No, don't delete that character. Delete that one. Um, print is the right form, correct? Seriously, print. Like, yeah, this does accept um, the format string followed by other parameters. This is what I was checking for. And that is correct. It does indeed allow for that. All right, let's run this. Python. In fact, why don't I do that for my other thing as well? Um, We can do the logging.debug and redundantly we'll print it. Python fishnet.py. Go back a move. Play g6 again. T is not defined. Um, oh, I blew it somewhere. 
Uh, I blew it somewhere. Got Watkins response. Wait, why does it still say debug? What have I done? Uh, T is undefined in my 486 line. Oh, that's supposed to be the time. Um, that's okay. Um, Do I have to use the... Uh, let's see... Yeah, I have to use the uh, substitution or whatever this operator is. printf doesn't accept this format. Um, or print doesn't. Maybe printf does. I don't remember all the syntax, uh, the right ways to do things. Um, ER reference before assignment at line 472. That's a real issue. Oh, hang on. What have I done here? Oh, okay, so there is no ERR here. There's just, um, yeah, I don't know why I thought this was correct. Um, what I'm looking for is data, which is that decoded response here. There we go. Okay. Let's again repeat this test. First move. All right, and then there are, there are attributes of that first move. Cool. Um, so naturally the next thing to test is what happens if I put in a completely invalid uh, request. Something that's just not part of the um, not part of the solution. That definitely sounds like construction. Okay. So yeah, and then we get list index out of range. So as I expected here, um, so I need to be able to test if move's length is greater than zero. Then print out our first move. And even make that our best move, but one thing at a time. Okay, that was prompt. Okay. Ah, list does not have an attribute length. Size. Wait, do we have a greater than zero anywhere? Do we have an is empty? Do we have, I don't, oh, if moves. Perfect, let's do it. Yeah, we're learning Python as we go. Um, got Watkins response and did not attempt to print anything invalid. Nice. Very nice. Uh, yeah, Python's useful um, when you learn its nuances, and I guess that's true of any language. Uh, okay, so if moves, then we're gonna assign moves zero as our best move uh, dot something um, probably get some attribute out of move zero um, let's hang off on doing that until we put a valid request in I mean, D2D3 is valid. It's just not part of the solution. So let's get some real data here. Um, okay, so we've done a JSON loads thing. 
um, move the first move where it moves the index zero. This looks like a map of some sort. Um, I'm, I again have stuff to learn about Python. Uh, yeah, let's try to introspect attribute UCI. Um, actually, wait, no, that that might be exactly what we want to do. Is just return moves zero rather than returning best move, because what, what other things do we need as part of this info structure? Some sort of evaluation and stuff? I don't know. Um, like there's an eval, there's the best move, there's a PV. Um, Let's just keep things simple. Let's deal with things one at a time and then augment this as we need to. Um, oops, let's not get rid of that just yet. If moves. In other cases, we're just going to fall through and return none because there was, well, actually, um, you could say else return none explicitly because maybe there's some other value that's worth returning in the case where you just didn't get anything back. Maybe none is okay in both cases. Um, but here, none is actually correct because you're outside of the solution. Whereas down here, who knows? Your guess is as good as mine what the correct return value should be. Um, nine, none probably suffices. Okay, yeah, len of moves gets the actual length of the list. So I wasn't wrong in thinking there was a way to get the length, but it's not dot length, it's len um, as the function name, accepting a list or accepting some sort of collection. Um, just forget these things if you're not constantly immersed in it. Uh, or rather, if you don't refresh your memory with that, you will forget it. Um, you know, probably would have been reasonable for me to um, Try to print out this moves zero UCI attribute uh, just to see what it is. If this looks like a string, if it walks like a string and talks like a string and quacks like a string, is it a string? Probably. Uh, okay, yeah, that definitely prints like a string. I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, that would be the sanest thing, is like we have a string, a string, a string, a string, a string, and an integer. Uh, that would be how I would expect that Python's um, JSON parsing library would handle this, but uh, in fact, yeah, we looks like we have this sort of mapping. Oh, in fact, this is an alphabetical order in terms of keys. That's why it's differently ordered than what we have here. This is showing me the nodes first because this is alphabetical. And this preserves the string, integer, string, 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 string relationship that's um, up there. This might even be a dictionary. I'm not sure. It's some kind of map. But cool we can see if we're in the solution or not in the solution. Um, yeah, maybe just return the top move of the list, or the list of moves. And now if I'm returning something of that form, um, then all my other return values have to be of the same data type, or I'm just going to confuse myself. Um, so the same data type, I'd 
assume it to just use a null value. Or none. None is the keyword that's used um, in Python to represent I don't have a thing. And then down here. Um, best move is equal to solve the position. And if best, well, okay. Before we start making the analysis and actual gameplay, start using these. Um, now that we've proven that we can parse what we get back uh, and not crash in having parsed it, uh, now let's actually feed in the game moves. And then um, after that, change what um, the library does in response to these. Uh, order of dictionaries is random but fixed. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I guess that makes sense that if you're like using a dictionary that's probably more like a hash table, so ordering is not necessarily alphabetical. So probably just based on how hashing works, which for all we care is random. Um, all right, so request. Here, I'm gonna try to change moves into a comma separated uh, string. So the most naive way of approaching that is not gonna work at all. There's no way that moves is already, oh, it's, Job moves dot split is what we do here. Um, okay, so when we're calling solve, okay, is so when we're calling go. Um, moves is an array, which I'm going to join using commas. Uh, oops. No, this would be easier to type if every one of my fingers could be typing right now. It's a little bit more challenging uh, with one of them injured. So, pardon the typos. Okay, list. <laughs> Okay, list object has no attribute check. I'm just going to put this into a uh, search engine and it's going to tell me exactly what I'm doing stupidly. Uh, Python. Oh, look, it even figured out that I was doing Python. Um, correct usage. String or character dot join my list. Of course. Um, I bet there's a reason for the syntax being the way it is. Uh, oh, well, check that out. Now do I feel dumb. Oh, well, we're learning. I'm learning. You're probably not. Uh, so we want to make these comma separated. And try that again. Uh, Watkins response. I didn't even see what I was requesting, but let's try it. Oh, okay, I accidentally hit the button too many times. It'll be more interesting to see what happens here anyway. B6, etc., etc. All right. So yeah, it's this response is appropriate for the moves that I'm playing, that all these are legal moves in the given position. Um, oops, we don't need that. So all these are legal moves. So it's awesome to see that um, I'm properly joining things together. Uh, let's go to solve. Is there anything more to do here? I suppose I could, hmm, could be more terse about this and not have to explicitly spell out the request like I'm spelling it out, but 
Uh, info. Am I using info anywhere in this block? Nope. Um, so let's move this info definition down here. Okay. Um, So yeah, I think solve now obtains a appropriate solution. Um, okay, and like we were saying earlier, we could just say if um, if we have a best move, then do stuff with it. Um, move is going to be our uh, in fact best move is probably not the best way to express this but just click solution and if there is a solution use it is the way we're going to extract the move out of that. Um, now this is probably all in the wrong part of the program. Um, yeah, we'll figure out where to do this all in the um, solution where available or we'll, uh, yeah, just use the solution it's pretty clear what that means um, best move I've got info yeah maybe I do need to focus on what are the other attributes I need to be filling in info best move info string I'm not going to have a string per se. Um, <laughs> Oops. The best move is best move. We could say info string is equal to uh, dumping this dictionary as a string, I guess. Uh, it's not even JSON at that point, is it? Well, I suppose it is. A really small set of, or a subset of um, uh, that. Let's print that. Uh, solution interpolating info string. I think at this point I'm pretty confident. Well, it's still useful to have that while I'm troubleshooting the rest of what I'm writing. Oh, 495, if solution. Uh, is not none or something? Um, correct none, fishnet, I to see correct usage. Oh, is none or is not none. It's the correct way to do a comparison. Uh, so it's not not equal to none. Just needs a colon there. That's better. 
Yep. Yep, you got me. I, I do need the colon there for the scope to be defined for this block. Um, it's not even a matter of forgetting semicolons anymore. We're forgetting entire colons, guys. It's pretty serious. Uh, so let's go back one. Solution. Oh, look, it actually printed. Wow. Okay. My code actually ran. That's surprising to me. <laughs> I'm sure to um, uh, Niklas, this is no big surprise that, of course, Fishnet works. It's just surprising to me that I can write something and it doesn't fail. Um, all right, best move, best move, string, string. Oh, look at all those parameters that we could be setting. Oh, which ones do we want to set? Score is kind of useful, but I don't have a score. Um, could just set the score to like a million or something if we're winning and uh, negative a million or something if we're losing. Oh dear. One second. What's this? Hello? Hey Dan, how are you? Doing fine. How are you? Sorry about that. Uh, just setting my plans for this afternoon. So, uh, nothing that's going to take away from this. Um, yeah, apparently there's a local concert nearby. There's going to be um, organ and a harpsichord. Um, and uh, actually, I misheard that. I think that. Yeah, either way, it's going to be classical music that's performed locally, so that'll be interesting. Um, so I have to get that all squared away. Uh, so where was I before? Um, let's see, we've got our string, got our token that's any one of these. We can set those. Oh, man, yeah, no, I... Some of these look quite familiar, actually. Um, nodes. There's one. We've got nodes. Um, that would be useful to set. Info. Nodes. If I can spell. 
simple solution. Nodes. I might even be able to just say e info is equal to solution, but we got nodes, we got SAN, we got UCI. Yeah, I can't do that kind of translation. But all I care about anyway is the UCI and the nodes, so that's cool. Um, have I forgotten anything? If you can hear that humming in the background, I'm not sure you can. Um, that's our uh, the doorbell getting jammed. Um, and that just happens sometimes, and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, just wait for it to unjam. Okay. I'm not even sure that info string is used for anything. Well, regardless, we've got it, so might as well use that, I suppose. Um, solutions not none. Get all that. Where do we return here? Um, oh, there's no explicit call to return. So, yeah, I just add one myself to bypass all of the invocation of Stockfish. Um, the downside of that is that now we don't have um, an evaluation. We just have the number of nodes. Um, like I could just say mate in 50 for basically any of these. Um, because that's got to be accurate. If you have fewer than 50 pieces remaining, well, I don't know. You could say mate in 50 times the number of pieces that you have remaining. And that would, actually, that would be a upper or lower bound. Um, because you could only... If you went 50 moves without gaining or losing a piece, without any kind of capture happening. Basically, there is some upper bound. I could specify it. Um, it's pretty easy to predict that pieces disappear pretty quickly. Figuring out the exact upper bound is a bit challenging, but um, in terms of analysis, what really matters is the number of nodes and not the distance to mate. Um, at least for most contemporary anti-chess engines, that's what's relevant. Uh, and mate is mate, so... Um, so, uh, yeah, I suppose I don't need to do any of that initialization unless we actually have a solution. And then we define that solution, and there we go. And we can bypass invoking Stockfish altogether. And like I said, I'm going to comment out or remove that um, once I've proven that um, the proof of concept here. So let's go back one. Let's go back one more. E3. What's it going to be, Stockfish? None type has no attribute yet. Um, <laughs> on 806, in best move. Oh, now I broke it. None type has no attribute yet. Played move with level blank and etc. at lapsed. Uh, part. Part equals go. Okay. Well, I'm definitely returning something invalid. I guess I have to return info? I don't know. Yeah, you're right. I do need to return info. Okay, so it plays b6. Let's go back. Stockfish. b6. There we go using the solution like a good cheater would. Just kidding. Um, 
So, uh, anything else to be done here? Well, um, I guess I could leave the printing in. I need to do a bit more testing. So I don't know the solution offhand. Okay, so that left the solution. So we've tested now, what if we're in the solution? What if we're not in the solution? Um, yeah, pick B6. Usually it's been picking B5. Um, uh, so I'm going to pick away at this until I guess the right answer, I guess. I think it's bishop b5 anyway. Oh, that's wrong. Oh, in fact, no. Here's that. Wait, I don't have the analysis button here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, queen g4 is not it. Because if that were it, um, okay. Huh. Okay, we're going to cheat. We're totally going to cheat this. Um, my own instance is going to note that I'm a dirty, dirty uh, anti-chess tutor. Um, comma, b7, b6. Okay, what's the answer? What keeps me in book here? Only because I'm testing. A4 is how you stay in book. Never would have guessed that. Well, never as in... It would have taken me about 40 tries to figure that one out. Let's go back one. Make sure that b6 is still there. b6 is still there. a4. e6 is the top move. Good. So as black, it plays in book. As white, picks e3. If I play b6, it picks a4. And it's referencing the book to do this. Now, that wasn't the goal. The goal is not for play to do this, because that's just no fun. Um, I mean, OK, maybe that's appropriate. I don't know. Um, uh, but for what I'm trying to do, I'm just going to reserve this for analysis. Um, so I don't need this printing. Don't need this redundant printing. Well, actually, yeah, I do need that printing to prove that I'm not using it. Um, and then once I've done that proof um, that it's not using that solution, and it's just playing on its own, like here, it didn't find A4, right? Oh, I accidentally double-clicked. By I, I mean... Um, Okay, yeah, it's pretty clear it's not using the solution, even without looking at the printing. But, uh, so, cool. Um, not sure how that's going to work in terms of the post-game analysis. Um, but, yeah, it seemed to have something here. Anything else to do? I think that's okay. All right, we're going to try this out. Uh, um, uh, the post game analysis. There's no way this is going to work, by the way. Just putting that out there. Um, all right, so the other day, AI level 5. Oh, can I not see the game? I'd like to see my defeat, or my victory. Uh, okay, cool. Very cool. Not really. I did something I evidently did incorrectly. Um... Alright, looks like I just have to play a new game.
or import a game. Here, let's... Oh, wow. It's my turn on a game, apparently. Uh, your turn. Oops, not that. So it's my turn on some games, it's telling me. Um, where's my games in progress? I forget where to find that. I thought I usually see it down here if I have something in progress, which I don't seem to have. Okay. I guess I'll not worry about it. Um, yes, yeah, so let's go to Leeches. And I'll go to the TV. Pick a recent anti chess game. Previously on this. This one lasted. What was our opening? Okay, this one left the solution very quickly. I guess that's a reasonable test to have. Uh, let's grab that, copy, and then paste it. Uh, import game, request a computer analysis, go. Um, analyzing game and move 39, 29, 28, 27, 26. Give that a second to churn and burn. It'll probably crash at the point where um, we're trying to do analysis for the first few moves of the game and I'm not providing things like an evaluation. Or maybe it'll actually be resilient to the fact that I'm missing some attributes and um, the UI itself will fail to render. Um, so, oh, kaboom. All right. Um, yeah, apparently I need to provide a score and or a time. Mate is not in the score, and time is in the part, or, um, and part time is less than 100. But yeah, there's no key of score. Um, the way I did this. Oh, this is a UI render fail? I didn't know. I mean, I, I was just speculating the UI would fail to render um, for a new game. Yeah, it's, that's got to be unrelated. Um, but apparently I need a score. Um, I don't know how to get the distance to mate. That's not really part of what Watkins gives you. Um, I could just say, like, mate in 500, because I don't know. It's, I mean, that is a score. It's not, um, it's not the best way to score it, but, uh, certainly I don't have a distance to mate. I have the number of pieces that are remaining, but... Um, I guess a way to get the distance to mate would be to follow the entire solution and then to extract, um, use Stockfish to figure out the distance to mate from the final position, um, which could be done in real time. Um, so yeah, the big question is, uh, do I need information? Well, people want this information. It's really useful info to have, is distance to mate. Um, so yeah, either I've got to walk the solution or enhance Watkins to be able to walk and then call Stockfish through Fishnet, but that's not happening. Um, So, yeah, I'm, apparently I need to... Let's commit what I've got so far. Um, and then figure out how to walk the solution and to get a distance to mate from the final position. That's complicated. That's where this gets messy. 
Um, still, I, this did end up being a lot simpler than uh, my initial attempt, which was to expose the Watkins API through Stockfish code. Um, and just integrating that uh, is probably way more difficult than what I'm attempting here. Um, so. Uh, git add fishnet.py git status. Um, have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Yeah, that's fine. This is all work in progress anyway. So I don't need to make this secure HTTP. Um, maybe provide a default Watkins endpoint in the INI file. So the default endpoint does actually specify the path. So that should be specified here. Um, which in turn means that in my source code, I should not be putting it there. Because somebody could theoretically have a different path. Um, get endpoint. Yeah, it does not need to. Path is optional. And in my case, I don't have a custom path. Um, path request equals self work. Um, but yeah, here there is no custom path. Just use the default configuration path. That makes more sense. Um, okay, Watkins, now I know I've been doing this locally, uh, just proof of concept first, let's put that there, um, run this again, oh, it's actually going to try the analysis again, that's clever that leech us is re-requesting the analysis because it well it's trying to get the first few moves of the game um, this is going to fail again because um, I don't remember there was some reason this failed oh because I don't have score or time defined um, I mean I could put for a time of like five years because it took something like that for them to develop uh, the Watkin solution but that's not what they're going for here. <laughs> um, I could actually look at 855. Um, very low time reported if it's less than 100. I could just put 100 in there. I don't know. Um... But yeah, this is some kind of sanity check. Hundred's probably fine. Or I could put negative one would be kind of silly. Wait, wait, what's this trying to check? Sorry, I, I got distracted. If mate is not in part of score. Yeah, no, I'm actually missing that. Um, I do need to say whether it's mate or the player's getting mated. I don't need to put a distance. I just need to put um, the word mate or mated based on what's going on. Uh, I can do that. Uh, 
figure out how to figure out which colors moving uh, uh, it's slightly bothersome but no big deal At least it seems like that'd be something pretty easy to figure out. Um, like I've got the ply number. Actually, this is usually the form mate 500 or mate minus 500, um, I think. So I think they use mate, or is it negative mate? I forget. Um, CP, yeah, so it would be mate minus number. Uh, would be that form that it's normally specified in, or format. Um, now ply, I just made up there because I'm not sure the right way to extract it. Oh, moves from zero to ply. Um, <laughs> I can't simply do length of moves, though. Oh, that's good. Um, variant, position, nodes. I'm not actually exposing ply at the moment. I think that's fine though, because if we're in the solution, that means we have the full move history, otherwise we wouldn't be in the solution. So... Um, yeah, this is still rather cluttered probably okay. Um, sorry I got distracted so easily. Um, I was in the middle of... nope, that's not right. Okay. Uh, Python ternary. A if condition else B. Plus, and, uh, Lee Chess doesn't have anti chess from position anyway. Um, um, Watkins solution is a win for white. Um, use length moves to determine. Player color. Uh... Okay, start. 
starting workers. It's cool. Uh, didn't need all these tabs open. Now, why do I not have my analysis? I wonder. Okay, I've got this. I can go back to the game. I've already imported the game. Let me import it again. Which is just going to link me to the same game again. That's okay. Um, Alright, we're going to try to analysis, or analyze this again. Um, yeah, the UI render failure must be unrelated. Uh, not that. Let's go to the f errors. Here we have... Uh, whatever that means. Leech us analyze that legacy is not a function. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Perhaps I do need to. I mean, I've been trying really hard to keep my instance up to date. Uh, perhaps I do need to update it again. I'll figure that out sometime at j, at k, etc. Yes, okay, I just need to update. Cool. Internal server error. Uh, something happened here. Yeah, let me try updating before we do too much testing. Um, get status. Well, okay, I, this isn't even a fishnet thing at this point. This is my leechess instance. Um, let me briefly take down my leechess instance, which I've got over here. So I can update my leechess instance and then make sure things are okay. Let's go back over here into... Well, before we get too far, get add fishnet.py um, git log is this Let's just say this again git commit good enough git pushed my repo Watkins so that's still a work in progress Clear. Now let's go back into Leela. Um, get status, get stash clear, get stash, get checkout master, get pull origin master, no, upstream master, which would be the actual leeches source code. Get Check out AI user new, get rebase master. Oh wow, no merge conflicts. Incredible. Get uh, stash apply. And then we got my install script, which uh, you see does this update and then building dependencies and stuff. I've done this so many times that I just made a script for that. It updates all the sub-modules and rebuilds everything and all that joyful stuff. Um, so that'll take a minute. Um, so yeah, so far I'm actually impressed how far I got with that. And I guess for the work in progress, um, just estimating a distance of 500 half plies is probably not bad. Um, it's better than what a human can do, which is guess the wrong move. Um, whereas now we've got, this is the best move. Um, there's no PV, no distance to mate. Um, but at least we know what the best move is, and we know the number of nodes in which it's solved.
I don't think there are any anti-chess games that require more than 500 plies uh, to mate. Or even more than 500 moves, rather. Because, you know, if I remember right, Stockfish will print out uh, mate 5 if there's a mate in 9 plies, which is 5 moves. So, um, that plus or minus 500 means um, number of moves, not ply count. Um, I could just print out mate and then the number of pieces, but that's um, that would confuse everybody. Yeah, you'd prefer to have the distance to mate, and Watkins doesn't currently provide that. Um, and nor does any solution that I've come up with. Though, like I was saying, I could walk the tree and figure out what the distance is. Oh, I want to set the mate colon 500 instead of using a string. Um, instead of a string 500, set it to an int 500. That makes sense. Um, can I get that going in parallel here? Uh, I probably need to open another console. Um, How long is this going to take, anyhow? Uh, I guess it's worth opening another console. Let's do it. And by console, I mean shell. Uh, oh, okay. I was wondering why my window switcher was not allowing me to merge my windows properly. Um, so let's switch over to our chest development user. Get rid of our extra chrome. Clear CD into fishnet. There we are. Uh, so I want to set this equal to. Oh. Okay, instead of a string, I want to set this equal to mate colon. Um, and maybe the way I write this is uh, 500 if that, else minus 500, because we're considering this to be mate either way. Okay, but yeah, that makes sense in terms of the, uh, what you're showing me down here, you're able to accept these parameters and build a map or dictionary or some sort of key value collection um, using this uh, score kind, score value, score value, score kind and score value is not none and not score bound. Info score is equal to, oh, okay, here's the example, score kind colon score value. Cool. Um, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, that should help. Uh, still compiling. That's okay. We can still um, run this in the background while stuff's compiling. There's fishnet. Yeah, of course it's going to give a bad gateway. Actually, I'm going to not do that because my router might freak out. Um, so it shouldn't. Um, really, my equipment should all be resilient, and I shouldn't even have to worry about that. But um, So yeah, just wait for the stuff to compile and then get um, stock or leech us back up and running. There's a lot of files to compile for this project. It's a big project. Do 
29. Okay, well, I should actually look at we're in video and preferences and report, and I guess we're not necessarily traversing modules in alphabetical order. <sighs> so. Could always fire up the Leela instance while it's compiling. That'd be more fun. <laughs> uh, there's no benefit to doing that. Or very limited benefit to it. Yeah, so rebuilding the UI takes uh, a fair moment. Uh, this would actually be faster to deploy if it were already compiled. So that's why in production this isn't such a big deal, because you can compile everything in advance and then deploy it, if I understand correctly. Plus you probably have a slightly more advanced machine than this brick. Um, so. Okay, um, so that's what's going on on the server. Um, just waiting for everything to come up. And you'll note that on my instance I used to have all these engine-engine -engine matches going on. Presently I don't have all that. Um, going. So once this does successfully finish deploying, um, CPU utilization should drop. Unless the analysis immediately starts, but that would surprise me. Oh, um, okay. Uh, what do we got here? Timed out, timed out. Oh, started Stockfish, cool. Uh, from the start position, um, a group of anti-chess researchers have collectively published what they call the Watkins Solution. I unfortunately do not remember the author name. Um, let me go get that. Because that is important. You have to give credit where credit's due. Um... Uh, view read me. Oh, it's the anti chess solution server. Thanks to Mark Watkins um, for solving anti chess and proving, or publishing the proof trees. So, yeah, researchers collaborated on and did much, much independent work to come up with a solution, um, but informed each other as they made progress as to what the remaining challenges were. And finally, there's an open source form of the solution, and Mark Watkins is still maintaining that and coming up with better ways to uh, provide that. Um, it's more compact, I assume, or whatever better means. It's kind of loosely defined, as he says, um, uh, what it means to improve upon that. But he's... Um, I guess the well okay uh for a while um there was a french researcher in canada um i'm drawing a blank on the name unfortunately the author of nil attack the engine all right yeah okay cool see you around uh Rauf. <laughs> um so yeah the author of nil attack um, published uh, or he published code for assembling the solution and made a website where you could go get the solution. Uh, Mark Watkins is the first to actually make this format readily available to everybody so anybody can have the full solution on their computer um, which is really cool. All right, can I get my UI back, please? Or am I, oh, do I have to, 
force reload. Force reload still no good. Uh, I goofed. Well, I'm not sure where I goofed it. But yeah, anti-chess is solved, and we're trying to expose that solution. So Stockfish doesn't have to go look at... It doesn't have to go calculate it every time. Just use the known solution. Um, uh, okay, I can go to the main page. The main page is still there. And yet... Um, from this page, I still get leeches analyzed at legacy is not a function. Um, well, yes, yeah, that's roughly what it means. It means taking the proof trees that are distributed. Um, if you're curious, uh, let's go over to GitHub and I'll tell you how to go find this anti chess tree server um, this are our means of accessing this uh, Watkins proof table uh, through HTTP um, I'm not sure yeah I guess Watkins was not web enabled uh, so Niklas very helpfully exposed that through a web server and now I'm writing a client <laughs> that runs in Fishnet that consumes that web server. Or, yeah, it's it's fun. Um, oh, this is the thing I was going to put back when I was done. Um, so that I don't need to, well, okay, first of all, this needs to... Um, Uh, well, man, it would be nice to have this working. This leechess analyze dot legacy is not a function. Uh, GitHub. Uh, that's no good. Let's try this. Nope. Okay, fine. Okay. doesn't help. Uh, Leechess analyzed uh, legacy. Surely something that broke at some point. Uh, closed issue, drop off the media query, etc, etc. Um, I'm curious now, what is this? Money chess. Wait, what? Moneychess.com. I don't even understand. Um, why would you even do that? I think he's being sarcastic here. Uh, whatever. So, um, yeah, I don't understand the point of iframing Lee Chess, because it says Lee Chess all over it. Uh, usually sites don't allow themselves to be framed like that, so it's interesting that that was possible. Um, Apparently, yeah, I can't get my analysis board going. So, in order to do testing, I'm going to have to ignore the whole analysis aspect of this. Um, and instead have to allow the AI to cheat as we're playing the game. Um, come on. Okay, there we go. It made a move. It made a bad move, but it made a move. Um, so, 
no, actually, so I'm going to put the default in this file. Um, grab that and go to my fishnet.ini. Uh, that's not what I intended. Uh, there it is. I found the thing that I was using, which is actually, yes, that's correct, except it's running at port 5004. Uh, why it's running there, I guess that was just the default port number or something. Um, so let's verify, well, I, it's not cheating yet. I need to enable cheating. Um, so by cheating, I mean using the solution for actual gameplay. Um, okay, that should enable it. Um, so, oops, let's start up. Um, how many shells do I have open? One too many. One too many. Okay, now we're back to some sort of sane state. So, is it going to play B6? It plays B6. Is it going to respond to A4? E6, yes. Let's do a rematch. E3. Okay, it's not going to play a6, or a4, e6, rook a3. So it must be getting those moves from um, my leeches. Oh, actually, to verify that, from my Watkins server, rather. Um, to verify where I'm getting it from, let's do dash vv for doubly verbose stuff. And see, do we get anything um, indicating that we're talking with Watkins? Played move. Depth zero. Huh. Yeah, I'm not seeing anywhere it indicating that it's pulling from the solution, or from my instance, but if it doesn't play B5 on move 1, then it's definitely using a Watkins server. I just don't know which one. Um, uh, so, one second. Let me first get the code that I want to check in. Um, get diff fishnet.py um, and then is fishnet uh, get status or get diff uh, fishnet.ini oh, apparently that's I typoed ls and got the train that's cool ls Status. I don't think fishnet.ini is one of the files that you check in under this project. Or at least a developer wouldn't. Uh, git add fishnet.py, git commit, and then push f that. think that'll do. Um, so I think if my fishnet.ini does not define this um, this endpoint, then I think I do use the leeches endpoint instead. Um, so we're going to try that and see do we get anything. Um, uh, let's go back one. Uh, and then make a request. So we get B5. Um, uh, 
Oh, interesting. I'm not even logging what um, fishnet endpoint we're using. Uh, our Watkins endpoint. Um, Let's go here. This is. Can I get a line number? Can I please get a line number? 1553. I suppose I could have searched here to get that. Um, Oh, and this is where it's actually useful to have a get Watkins endpoint as well. Um, there we go. That will give us more information than we had a minute ago. <laughs> Watkins endpoint, that is not correct. Uh, this needs to be Watkins underscore endpoint. Uh, I'm curious now, is that warning reused anywhere? Uh, no. So I can leave that code the way it is. Watkins endpoint is using the leeches or table based leeches org slash Watkins. Um, should probably be ending in a trailing slash. Um, okay, there it is using. Watkins with the trailing slash. Um, I'm actually curious if this is going to do anything in terms of using the, the moves out of that solution. Hey, Curry Howard, welcome. We finally made some progress here. It's cool stuff. Um, let's see. Wait, what? Why does this not work? Uh, I guess the... <sighs> do we use underscores? No, we do not use underscores there. Okay. Um, there we go. No underscore. Much better. Um, so if I go here and I'm playing anti-chess... Oh, the other reason that's not using that... Uh, by the way, is that I have cheating disabled. Uh, let's see, get status. Do I need to add fishnet.ini? Apparently not. Oh, fishnet.ini is generated anyway. That's why it doesn't show in this listing. And that's why diff um, refuses to show it, because you don't you never check that in. There's no need to. Okay. Um, so I've got the version of that that I want. Let's go over here and say that even if we're playing the game, um, go ahead and use the opening book. And here we go. Yeah. Cheating like a champion. E6. There we go. Now, the point isn't to cheat. The point is that I want to use this for analysis rather than for gameplay. The only reason that I'm enabling it during gameplay at all is just so I can test that um, I'm actually contacting the server. Um, there we go. Um, get status. Got all these other things going on in this directory, but I can ignore every single one of those. Um, I suppose Watkins test is no longer necessary because now we know that we're 
connecting fine. Um, not using HTTPS because my endpoint is not secured using that technology. I think I got it. Uh, I could always redirect this through my Nginx server, but I don't need to. Um, fixed back off is false. Fixed back off actually applies to um, uh, yeah, yeah. Fixed, fixed, no, um, oh, no space, of course, why would there be a space? Um, so apparently what I need to do is specify it that way instead. Um, No. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, okay, cool. Fixed back off does not apply to um, the Watkins endpoint because we don't repeatedly ping that endpoint. We just try it once. And if once it fails, we're not going to ping it again. Um, there we go, and if I go look at my fishnet.ini file, Watkins endpoint indeed has no underscore, has no space, none of that business. It's cool. Um, anything else? What have I changed since I did my last git add? Just the printing of that. So I'm going to fix that. Um, get commit. Uh, print. Uh, brings initialization. Uh, push to my copy of that. Yeah, it confused me. I see Leela all over the place here, but I'm actually pushing to uh, Fishnet. There we go. Um, and let's just make sure I haven't done something stupid. I know I keep checking this over and over. Uh, right, if, if depth is equal to none, if we're doing analysis, only then try to use this. Uh, so let me retry my analysis. I did import a game a minute ago. Um, uh, for me to actually try this, we're going to need to, to have Fishnet up and running. Oh, it says I'm playing a game. You know what? We're going to abort that game. Go back to my imported game this thing with the pieces the versus destroyer 01 or 101 um, can I not get an analysis of that oh, I didn't even put the link to it over here okay well so this is where I was getting tripped up um, somehow I'm still getting this jQuery exception. Something in my code somewhere is attempting to access this thing that's no longer defined. Um, and I think at this point the whole writing the Watkins integration into Fishnet's done. The rest is just an exercise in getting that exposed through the UI. Um, so we're moving from, um, so you've probably seen me do some coding with Stockfish and C++ before. Um, 
You've seen me probably do some coding in Ruby or Java before. Those would be closer to my comfort zone. Today you saw me coding in Python, which I haven't touched in a number of years, but apparently I'm still proficient enough to, um, I don't know, to make Watkins be able to talk with this Lee Chess and for Lee Chess to use the Watkins solution while I'm playing against an AI. Um, and now, well, yeah, you've seen me do some coding in Scala before, too. Now we're going to see me attempt to code uh, to fix JavaScript that's probably compiled by Mithril or something, and oh my goodness. This is getting way, way outside of my domain of what I am familiar with. So, we've seen the easy part, is what I'm trying to say. And the part where I've been somewhat instructive. Um, and now we're moving to where things get messy. Hey look, somebody's playing Racing Kings on my server. Check that out. In fact, they were playing a game, and they're playing another game, and they're playing another game. So cool. Uh, it's good to see that it successfully played some games. Um, uh, anything else? What am I forgetting? Oh, for those unfamiliar with where my... I don't even remember my Nightbot command for my server. So I'm going to have to type in the URL here. Um, for those who haven't been there before, that's where you find it. It hasn't been up much these days because, well, I've been distracted with so many issues um, and doing so much testing with Stockfish offline that trying to do all that testing would be encumbered by having the server up and running because they'd be contending for the same CPU and memory and stuff. Um, well, so I think at this point I'm done with um, this. Go over to this game and see. We got Chess with Sean here. He's playing some good games don't want to interrupt what he's doing, but at the same time, I am going to fire up um, this in the background. Uh, I'm not sure how to run Fishnet as a service. Um, there's really no official support for that, so I'm just going to run that in another shell here. Uh, let's just switch user to Leechus user. Okay, and then from here we're going to uh, get to fishnet and python fishnet. Uh, I would do this in the background. Let's do it in the background. There's no harm in doing it there. So now we've got two fishnets. I'm going to kill this one and leave the other one running in the background on my other screen. Um, So, this just gives you some idea of the various things that are running here. Uh, HTOP is top for hack source, if I'm saying. But no, it's really just a horizontal top that gives you more information. Um, or rather, conveys the same information in an easier to parse manner. Um, so. So where's my imported game? Because this is what I'm now trying to fix, is um, being able to view a game. And it's not working. Uh, I can't click online friends, that's okay. Um, I guess I could disable my stylish styles. Um, Oh wait, do I not have I have actually dark leeches on? I've got my terminal theme on. 
Actually, these CSS things shouldn't have any functional impact. It's just if I have, like, oh, no scripts are running on my dev server, which is good, because I'm not testing the dev scripts. I'm not running them at the moment, um, not on my dev instance. OK, so there's no functional impact of running CSS or using CSS. There really shouldn't be. Um, at least not what I'm doing. So somehow, um, I guess I'll need to do a screen capture. Here we go. Or display capture. Here we go. This is ugly. Leech us uh, analyzed our legacy is not a function. Um, something, somehow, somewhere, must be trying to use that. Um, so we're going to switch from fishnet to leeches. Get status. Um, mm -hmm. Get diff project build settings. That's the only thing I changed there is that you can um, continue compiling even if you have warnings. Warnings are not fatal anymore, so that's a okay. Um, um, why do I have? Isn't there a modules directory? Why do I have a sub modules directory? What's even in there? Board creator and PDF exporter. Uh, okay. Oh. Okay. Thanks. Um, welcome back. The browser cache has an old version. So let's trust that theory. I could just do like a force refresh, like control F5 to try to get a new one. Um, I'm not sure. I... Well, no, I should be able to control this from a browser point of view. So forced refresh, in theory, should do it. Um, I shouldn't have to go reach out to like my Nginx server and reconfigure anything, though that might not hurt. But um, either UI did not build properly, or my browser cache has an old version. Uh, okay. Well, let's try the UI build step again. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I have been seeing this. I've been seeing this like yesterday and today and putting it off in the back of my mind. Um, PRLL not found. And I tried to figure out how to install this. And it was like 11 p.m. and I couldn't figure it out. So, uh, yeah, I need to have PRLL. Um, now, I thought at one point I did try to install that. Evidently not. Uh, yum pro. Oh, we're not using yum. We're using apt. Uh, how do I say like yum provides, but for apt? Uh, let's see. Let's try the naive thing, like type prll. Yeah, I do have prll installed. Uh, it's parallels. <sighs> Yet. Yeah. This fails to find something on line 27. Uh, line 27 is build apps. Hmm. <laughs> so how come I can find it? In fact, for that matter, can I verify if this file is actually out there? Yeah, the file is there. Um, so what am I doing that's causing the, both the command and um, the file on the file system to not be found? UI build line one. OK, we're using sh instead of bash, but um, 
Okay, what if we try SH? And then from here, we're going to try uh, to see the contents of that file. That works. PRLs not found. Echo path. There's my path. Exit. Echo path. It's the same path. Well, okay. Let me take a look at UI build and see if I'm to blame for that. Or rather, where do I get the solution? Uh, uh, UI slash build. Okay, so this is last updated two months ago. Uh, okay, so that's the current state of this file. As far as I see, um, that, I mean that doesn't answer. I, I would be surprised if changing UI build were the solution. I was just looking for a quick, easy solution there, and it's not so simple. Um, so I've got that installed. Like if I do the command here, this way I get it. Um, which PRLL, you ask? What PRLL? Wait. How did that work? How does which not know where to find this? Um, but I can type the command. That's interesting. Okay, where can I expect to find this? There's no man entry. Uh, it must be just a shell feature. Uh, interesting. Um, this is a bash completion thing. But evidently, if I'm using, well, there's PRL.sh. Okay, let me try to understand this. This has me really confused. Yeah, if we've got PRL.sh defined, then do parallel execution. But otherwise, you have to do sequential execution. Interesting. Uh, let's take a quick look over here. Not that that's showing on stream, but um, Okay, I didn't suspect as much, so that's cool. All right. Yeah, I'm confused. Um, but yeah, if this file exists, then do parallel execution. Um, if the file does not exist, you have to do things sequentially. Well, what tends to be most effective for search engines, and a lot of developers code things this way, um, is getting the error message and um, making sure the error message is informative enough. Um, In fact, yeah, this file is referencing source on something. Um, but what tends to be most effective is if you just take that literal message, drop it in a search engine, and see what you get. Source not found. Profile not being sourced. That's not it. It's definitely not it. Uh, let's try that. Okay, let's.
let's try Google. Uh, drop this message in here. Okay, so this isn't a standard This invocation of parallel isn't something that was copied from somewhere else, but this is new code. Um, do I have to grant anybody ability to uh, to execute this shell? Is that what's going on? Um, that can't be. ls to lrt this. Okay. Anybody can read that shell file, but only root can write it. Um, source not found. Which source? What source? Um. Okay, so source is apparently a bash construct. Uh, profile not being sourced. What was my exact message? Source colon not found. And I've actually done the source command before. Um, does it not work in the sh shell? Okay. Uh, bash source usage. What does source do? It's a bash shell. It's a bash shell built in. Um, however, I thought this is going to be the issue. We're not using bash. We're using sh. So. Um, if I change this to bash, will this work? Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, I'm not sure why we explicitly are calling for the sh shell. Maybe not everybody has bash, but if we're using sh, then what's the source equivalent? Uh, I don't know. Oh wait, so we're using prll.sh, but that particular file um, is provided by the parallel package for your package manager for your operating system. Um, and not everybody's package manager is going to do that the same way. And my package manager uses the source command in that parallel.sh. Um, and yeah, I'm sure that file could differ from OS to OS. Um, so I'm just going to use my shell for what I'm doing. And that'll hopefully be good enough for everybody. Let's force refresh. There we go. So yeah, I guess the the issue here is that I was using clear. I was using this my Etsy profile.d parallel.sh is not platform agnostic, um, and I'm not the one providing that. This is provided by my package manager, right? Apt list install or app list uh, prll. I'm sure this is where I got it from. Um, and okay, yeah, not everybody running a server is going to run their server on Ubuntu, and that's my bad. Um, uh, a lot of people do do software development on Ubuntu, but uh, this is not my choice of operating system for this computer. Um, got kind of pushed into using it 
uh, my family members who were quite insistent that my operating system was the fault of their applications not working right. Um, so then we moved to this and then their applications still weren't working. And I have not had time to migrate back. So still on Ubuntu, dealing with it, it's okay. Uh, just means from time to time I'm going to run into stuff like this that's problematic until I have time to move to something better. That's okay. Uh, so yeah, let's try computer analysis. Hey, welcome back, Curry. Uh, good timing. We're about to see if this works. So Stockfish is doing most of the analysis. Um, question is, for the early moves of the game, am I able to skip Stockfish altogether and just go to the Watkins solution? Now granted, Watkins doesn't even include B5. Um, so really, I'm just testing, have I broken anything in terms of having Watkins analyze? OK. That's cool. Not sure how that worked, because I'm pretty sure this is not part of the solution. Like, oh, I'm sorry, no, B5, that must be part. Um, so, yeah, mate in 500, and then queen f3 is not part of that solution. So, white deviated from the approved path. Uh, so yeah, we've successfully integrated this. Very nice. I'm quite pleased to just have this proof of concept going. And then I'll leave it to... Um, well, I don't know, I could leave this here for a while. I'm sure other people are excited by it. Um, I've taken this as far as, uh, as far as I can learn with it. I don't think I could learn any more from developing it any better. Um, so yeah, proof of concept demonstrates that it is possible to use uh, the Watkins anti-chess solution for analysis. So instead of spending four seconds a move or three and a half seconds a move or whatever it is, bam, instantaneous evaluation server side. Just breezed right through those first six. Uh, yeah, anti-chess was solved. So. Yeah, now if we go over to the Leeches server, unfortunately we can't explore. Oh, no, I'm wrong. We can explore. Um, move. We can explore by Leeches database. Let's go to the Leeches twenty five hundred. False. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to go for anti chess. So we're on the Leechess database uh, rather than Watkins. Um, and so we're going to go E3. In fact, yeah, let's go explore this using Watkins. E3, B6, A4. Just follow this as far as we can. And then see if there are any Leechess games that match up with this. Uh, so now if I switch over to Leechus database, no games found. Let's open the filter as wide as possible. Still no games found. Let's go back a few. Okay, we found a game. Um, so let's grab this game, get its PGN, copy that, uh, go over here, import the game, and prove that we can analyze it. Okay, I thought I requested an analysis. Okay, yeah, it's going. So we see it's spending a couple seconds uh, as we have two analysis threads going at once. Move eight, seven, bam, the rest of the game done. So all this got analyzed instantaneously. Um, 
evidently I'm returning the wrong values for some of these. Wait, no. No, this is right. Mate and 11, mate and 11. So this is consistent anyway. As for the actual mate distance, that's not correct. So that's something I could do. Um, yep, sorry, Curry. Uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, no, the proof of concept is there. Um, 500 might be a bit extreme. Um, you could use whatever bound you want to use. I just happen to pick 500 because it's pretty clear that no game's ever going to go that long. Um, whereas if you set it to something else, who knows uh, how it would react. Um, but yeah, white is winning throughout that entire set of um, phase of the game. And then move seven, um, we've moved out of the... Uh, oops. Uh, okay, apparently I can't use Watkins that way from here. Um, yeah, bishop takes king is forced anyhow. Proof of concept demonstrates this is doable. So, if something's in the solution, just instantaneously look it up. Um, I'm not sure if what the approved moves are in this whole thing. I assume that bishop takes e6 was the uh, database move. Uh, yeah, the solution includes a lot of interesting positions. Uh, forgive me one more second. I am going to switch over to the light view again. There we go. I'm going to go back to dark if we can. And, oh, good, it kept across tabs. Um, let's get another game. Anti-chess. Except instead of going b6 on move 1, let's go b5. Because uh, this one's a lot more popular. And let's follow this in Watkins. Bishop d7, bishop g2. Just follow this as far as we can, because I'm pretty sure this has been played before. If nothing else, I've played this. So it's got to be there. Uh, e4, rook h8, e5. Okay, are there any Lee chess games that remotely follow this? Uh, knight h7, a4, knight f6, ef6, gf6. Lee chess, show me a game. No, go back one. Show me a game, please. Show me... Okay, there we are. We found a game. Um, so, we've got a draw between Le Musique and Graf Shakula. We got a black win. Okay. Oh, like I was saying, 2015. I picked this game, picked this opening, and I won from here. Um, well, that'd be a bit self-serving now, wouldn't it? To pick my own game and import it and see uh, how it went. Okay. Do you think if Zug had a website with a Java backend with Play 2, he'd look at it? Um, interesting question. Uh, if he had a web app or a blog or something written with Play 2, he'd look at it. Um, I'm confused. Isn't Leeches written with Play Framework? Um, but you're probably looking for something... Oh, need a project idea for a class. <laughs> oh, Zug's site. Oh, 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 yeah, his site. Man, uh, okay. Let's, let's try to get this done here. Um, sorry for the blinding white screen again. That's apparently how Chrome decides to present the screen to you between stuff. Um... Let's import this game. Let's grab the URL, which often I've been forgetting to do here. Import. Drop the URL here. Computer analysis in progress. All right. You need a project idea for a class, and Zug site needs improvement. Um, 
Right. Um, hmm. Trying to think of how. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what would be the most constructive use of everybody's time. <laughs> um. You need some sort of project idea, and you're wanting to collaborate with Zog. Um, and for some reason... Uh, okay, you're asking me, do you think he would take play too seriously? Um, I think some an entire website is kind of a large project. Yes, it, it does have nice Java bindings. Um, I wonder how recently did this come out? Uh, let me not blind everybody. Although now I've got my screen capture on. Let me switch back to window capture so I can pop up a separate window and not blind everybody. Play 2 was released. Uh, framework. Uh, when was this released? Somewhere on two five twelve. I mean, yeah, people are embracing this more and more. Um, I think an entire website is an ambitious project. Um, I'm not sure what kind of time investment Zug's going to make to try to understand an entire um, website application thing. Um, because there's a lot to be learned there, and you can't just pick it up and go with it. You do have to take some time to appreciate all the little pieces of it. Uh, I can't speak for him, but I don't think that he would um, necessarily read all the documentation or even enough to get a basic handle on it. Um, I'm not sure how... Okay, 2013 was 2.0. We're on 2.5. Um, it'd be two parts. Yeah, I mean, like, like I'm saying, I'm trying to keep an open mind here because maybe I'm missing something. One with templating, um, with markdown. Okay. And there would be subdomains for his silly games. Um, hmm. So I'm trying to think of what's the easiest way to introduce the sort of technology to Zug. Um, um, like, I know he spent a while trying to put together a game that was web-based... Uh, that I think was even Java based. That was that whole hearth chess thing, or Zug chess. I think if he could get his hands on something and build it up and not have to learn how it works first, uh, I think that could work. Um, as for getting him to build an entire website, or I guess you're collaborating with him on this website, um, yeah, maybe he might be interested. Maybe he could. Play 2 is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that might work. <laughs> yes. Even if he loves his Java, because it's a really popular language. I mean, he's done things in other languages, I'm sure. Um... Yeah, I think at. I'm trying to think of what would be a good Java uh, thing to help him. Like, what would he want to do to do a new thing for a website? Um, 
Oh, right. Yeah, no, it was a mess. And, yeah, my initial thought would be, well, surely he'd love to rewrite it. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah, one thing he has been harping on a lot is um, find me a way to get integration between GitHub and Eclipse for whatever I'm developing. Um, I think that's the key obstacle, is that if you're going to collaborate with them, you have to be able to have some kind of IDE, be it Eclipse, be it NetBeans, be it whatever you want, um, and be able to share the code somehow. Because, um, I mean, Git itself has enough barriers to entry to learning it. Um, but he keeps mentioning how dependencies are such an issue because of the way Eclipse does things is kind of hokey. And the way Git does things is different, so. Yeah, he was mentioning uh, 3D Loxball was something he wanted to do. But that 3D might be crazy, but Loxball... Actually, yeah, he, he's not very interested in wanting to do Loxball with... Um, is Microsoft Access Database or whatever. And so yeah, I think Loxball could interest him. Even, yeah. Well, he's not gonna learn Emacs though. You have to give him some kind of IDE that he can develop with or convince him that GitHub for Windows or whatever is worth doing and that he could just put his application in the cloud and be comfortable with it there. Um. I don't know. You have to give uh, him some tools to be able to um, get into the uh, 21st century. Because he's not... He is quite proficient but, um, at being able to work with the tools he has, but uh, getting him to pick up an entirely new tool um, requires... Uh, him to have some goal that he's aiming toward. And that's reasonable in itself, I think. So I played a4 here. I should have played e5. I played e5, which transposes almost, maybe, sort of. Not really. I got my lines confused here. Anyway. Well, yeah. Eclipse is a mess and a half. I would sooner recommend um, NetBeans or anything else over Eclipse. Um, but I'm not sure how to get him to use new tools. You're saying maybe if you say that, hey, let's make a Loxball website and show him we've got some tools that we can work with. Um, uh, then he might be open to that. Um, it, it's tricky because there is, you can't develop full scale applications um, in a sandbox that looks exactly like his dev stack. It, it's tricky if you're not using the same tools that other people are using and uh, apparently his current dev stack and GitHub or and um, various other file sharing services and um, not content yeah content management systems CVSs SVNs I'm struggling on the term it's repository you, yeah you need to there has to be some way of being able to share code with Sug if you're going to collaborate with him. Yeah, I think it could be entertaining. Um, I'm just curious. Like, you're using Emacs. What would what tools would you recommend that he use? Are you? Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm sure to some extent he wouldn't want us to go way out of our ways to set up, spend a lot of time setting up things, but. If there are some set of tools that are convenient for both us and him, or you and him, or whatever, um, 
then yeah, I'm sure he'd be open to that. I mean, yeah, not everybody's crazy enough to read books about um, lambda theory and functional stuff like I was doing the other time. You gave me the book and said, hey, here's a book but if you're interested, and I skimmed through a good part of it. and Like, yeah, category theory, sure, whatever. It's cool, good mathematical stuff. Not so easy to use on the fly without the appropriate tools, but whatever. You'd keep him in Eclipse using Git, GitHub, and Gradle. Uh, okay. Sure. Okay. If that's something you're all comfortable with, then that's cool. Yeah, I've actually had some streams I've done before. Uh, demonstrating just how I use NetBeans IDE and it's been pretty cool overall. Um, I'm not sure if the Git integration in Eclipse is just a POS and not worth trying to salvage. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a good academic book. Um, it's a little difficult on the practical application, but it's good at interesting academically. Right. Um, so, anywho, so what I got here shows that you can do these analyses, which is really cool. Um... So I was saying one of my next ambitions here was um, when I identify that I'm in the solution, try to better identify what the mate distance is. So that's cool. Um, Gradle or Maven's a must. You can integrate things like check style so the code base gets linted. Oh, nice. Um, is, is Gradle easier to use than Maven? I'm saying this having used Maven before and understanding uh, just how much configuration's involved. And I know that Gradle's supposed to be easier. Um, I was only forced to use Maven because my workplace had a special project where we were using tools. Um, for whatever reason, we were trying to stay on an older version of a library which didn't offer the functionality we needed. So I had to go get Maven, get all the source code, and patch it myself, which was exciting. <laughs> and um, I had to do it all in Eclipse, too. Um, I've never tried using Maven from NetBeans, but maybe it's less of a total pain in the rear end in NetBeans. Uh, right, yeah, there's no XML in Gradle. Um, Point to get. Oh! That's kind of cool. Okay, that seems flexible. Huh. Didn't know that. To some extent, I. Um. Well, rather than me imposing my opinion, um. Do you have an opinion of. Um, IDEs, like Eclipse versus NetBeans versus other IDEs. Um, I understand that Oracle bought Sun, and as such, um, uh, NetBeans now belongs to Oracle. Um, yeah, there's version pinning, right. And just curious if you have an opinion on that, and um, what IDE do you think might be best for Zug? Maybe Emacs is the best IDE for him to use. <laughs> Maybe I should take some more time to appreciate Emacs. Uh, 
but um, I've seen other IDs out there like Komodo Edit, which is good for web development. Um, it's got a lot of that scripting, similar to what you refer to in uh, Emacs, but not nearly the extent of what Emacs offers. Okay. Interesting. Now, I have not seriously considered that perspective, so I should really think that through. Um, yeah, starting with Vim or Emacs and then building your editor. And I think Emacs is probably easier to learn in terms of a learning curve than Vim is. If you had to use an IDE, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, my impression is that he's really ill-served sticking with Eclipse. Um, that, like, Eclipse is going to be... It doesn't present error messages in a very useful or informative way. Even on his stream the other day, he was seeing red lines underneath his code and asking, I thought I fixed the code. And then he changed the code, and it, um, the error went away, and then he changed it back, and the error was not there anymore. So even on his stream, we've seen instances where Eclipse presents incorrect error messages regarding his code. Plus, it's just... Uh, I don't know. Eclipse is in no way beautiful. It's very functional for, like, mobile development, but we're not doing that. Um, so... Okay. Uh, from that point of view, I might look into, just for my own curiosity, what are good plugins for that sort of development involving NetBeans. I don't know when I'm going to find time to do this, but, um, but yeah, NetBeans, I think working with Maven, working with Gradle, or uh, probably just Gradle, honestly. Um, I've used NetBeans in Git before. Uh, I wasn't working on a very inspiring project at the moment um, that was doing all that, but um, that was my whole trying to write good tools to teach Go, uh, the game of Go, around the time that Alphabet Go was having some great successes. Still haven't gotten back to that, um, because, well, it wasn't that inspiring of a project in terms of what I was doing. There's just too many steps involved, too much mundane work. And eventually, uh, Stockfish and other things got more interesting. Um, anywho, yeah. Um, well, so we saw that I was able to import this game and analyze it, which was really cool. Um, I don't know how many. Uh, uh, anti-chess analyses are done um, but so for the best case example we see like 50% of the analysis for this anti-chess game was just done in the blink of an eye instead of four seconds a move um, but this also demonstrates that um, it's possible to evaluate games without having the exact distance to mate, without having exact evaluate. Well, you know the evaluation. It's white wins. That's the evaluation. Um, we actually have the node count, which is not being exposed here, but that could be useful info. Um, to see that white wins in 2 million nodes, and white wins in 3 million nodes, and just how complex a position is. We've got this additional metric that we're now able to expose rather than showing a mate distance, which in anti-chess mate distances aren't necessarily that relevant. Um, it should be interesting. Um, from the UI here, don't show the mate distance for anti-chess. That's often not what determines how complex the position is. Because, I mean, the, sure, this is um, a player winning in seven moves, but that has some number of nodes affixed to it, whereas here it's pretty clear what's going on. Um, it's pretty clear White's not winning this in the next four moves, that um, indeed 
White's just gonna end up taking, 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 and uh, this pawn will step forward a couple times, and that'll be that. Um, so I think in terms of what we present to the user, don't show the mate score, show the complexity. And that'd be something very useful in the opening phase as well. Uh, Watkins tells you just how easy it is to crush b5, and that indeed like b6 would be better. Um, although b5 is still part of the solution, black's dead lost, it doesn't matter, but uh, some moves, um, like here where I left the solution, I went from a forced win to not a forced win, or um, every position is either one lost or drawn. Very few are drawn, I assume, I think. Anyway, uh, let me go back to these comments here. Uh, but yeah, was, before I do that, yeah, I think it'd be interesting um, to be able to expose complexity as a metric here, too, rather than showing mate distance. All right, so what do we got? Uh, working with Java, you got your build system gradle, your debugger, your yeah, visual VM, you got the editor, Emacs mode for Java. Um, that's cool. And then you integrate that all together and just compiles and tests are fun, etc. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I'd need to experience that to better appreciate it, but you know, I think you have a valid point that if you want tools that are highly functional, I mean, I do a lot of my um, development just from a command shell because I don't need the full IDE experience. Um, and yeah, the way you've got it scripted is for sure better than the way I do it. Um, oh, I struggled with this evil bit stuff the other day. I'm not going to get into it today. I don't have time for it right now. Maybe some other stream. Um, but, you know, what could be interesting, didn't need that open, uh, what could be interesting is, is there's some way that I can get back to fishnet and then try to do this sort of development from an IDE and then use Gradle uh, with fishnet. Um, this could be fun. Uh, so let me switch my view to capture the whole, whole display. Uh, we've got NetBeans ID, which I've not um, invoked in quite a while. I'm pretty sure there's a newer version than 8.1 out there. Oh wow, you can hear that humming. That's not an airplane taking off, that's just my computer. Okay, so if you can still hear me... No, okay. Um, check for updates. Uh, no updates available. All right, let's say new project. So we got Maven, but I want to use Gradle. Maven's just a pain. I don't want to use it. At least my experience, I've had really negative experiences with it. Um... I need tools, Gradle, 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 little thing. Where do I go to install the plugins? It's been too long since I've touched any of this, and now I look silly. Oh, how silly I look. Where do I go? Tools, plugins, there we go. Check for updates to in install stuff or whatever. Um, Gradle, Gradle support, Gradle Java EE support. Uh, which one do I want? This is developed last year, this is developed two years ago. Build Gradle, uh, open project can then be used as the usual Java project. You got Java EE project capability. Uh, code I was just writing was not in Java, it was in Python. I don't know if any of this matters. 
probably does. Okay. Yeah, Gradle support. This is probably the same thing I just brought up here. Um, I mean, that looks pretty cool. I'm sure not doing Java EE at the moment. Uh, also, I'm not sure what com CSEA, which would be the other plugin, would be. Um, and this one's more active. It's more recent. Uh, enables all features of the Groovy integration of it. Oh, that's cool. They got some Groovy stuff going. That's pretty groovy. Um, extensions now using the uh, deprecated API, such as the EE plugin, are broken in 1391. Um, 139 is released for NetBeans 8.2. Wait, there's a NetBeans 8.2. I checked for updates. I could have sworn there's. No IDE updates, yet I'm on 8.1. <sighs> what the world? How? Okay. Yes, I wasn't losing my mind. There is a newer NetBeans out there. Let me get the Gradle plugin while I'm still here. Gradle. Support. Install. Go. Buttons over here. Yes, Groovy. Rails. It's all good stuff. Uh, honestly, that is really good stuff. Um, I'm just irked by the fact that... Um, yeah, no, I trust the stuff. Sure, whatever. Requires my attention. Self-signed. Cradle support, continue. Yeah, let's restart NetBeans IDE. But... Why did NetBeans IDE lie to me? I knew there was a NetBeans newer than 8.1. And it told me no, everything's up to date. Just what kind of fast one is Oracle trying to pull here? Oh, come on. I mean, checking what version's the latest version's not really... This has always worked for me for every computer, and I'm just sad that this is not. This is the IDE installer, but this has also been the methodology I've been using to get updates for the latest stable version. Surely, 8.2 is the latest stable version, right? What, where's our release roadmap? Okay. Yeah, 821 dropped last year. Okay, well, I'm going to download 82, because apparently I can't upgrade from 81 to 82. 8. That means upgrade. Upgrade. As in going up a hill. No, not with a normal binary install. You it from the source. Okay. Can you upgrade NetBeans without downloading the whole install? No, not with a normally. Okay. Am I just hallucinating? Incremental upgrades cannot be performed at this time. You must download the installer. What? Yeah. The NetBeans platform is entirely pluggable. The IDE does update itself, at least in my experience. I'm not making this up. What gives? I do not understand. Well, I have no choice. We're going to do it this way. Oh, great. Now I have to pick one. Which one did I pick last time? <sighs> this is silly. I think I picked Java EE, because I have no reason to pick anything else. I'm certainly not doing PHP. 
<laughs> um, I don't necessarily need C++, and I could always plug that in whenever I want it anyhow. Um, yeah. Right, so I'm pretty sure this is the one I picked. So let's close NetBeans 8.1. Get the installer. We got a minute left on that download. I'm so confused because under Sun, I never had this sort of problem. For all the years I've used NetBeans, it's worked just fine. It's a fully pluggable architecture. In fact, it was quite impressive. I could upgrade from 5 to 6 or 6 to 7. Like, even across major versions, the whole check for updates mechanism would allow you to update or upgrade your application. And it preserves your workspace and carries it all over, and everything's done perfectly. It was immaculate. All right, let's install. Please tell me you're going to, like, migrate my stuff, and I'm not going to have to start from scratch. Uh, Glassfish, Tomcat, sure, why not? Um, I think that's what I did the first time anyways, both of those. Um, wait, that's not the newest JDK either. But fine. Um, good enough. Do, do, do. Oh, let me get some actual music out here. Uh, not that one. Doesn't even loop doesn't even loop. Pick a different soundtrack. <laughs> okay, let's do this. could this take? No, this step does actually take a while, because I'm installing a lot of software. Almost there, guys. Let me pick another tune. Do, 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 do. 
Do, 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 do. All right, let's see. Can I pick, um... Oh, the anticipation. But I do have this application that does run under Tom Tomcat, which would be the Cards Against Humanity uh, game. Um, it's supposed to be pluggable right under Tomcat. Now that has nothing to do with Lee Chess or anything, but um, yeah, for the stuff we're doing, I shouldn't need it. <laughs> oh no, we got null, guys. We got null. Oh, null went away. Okay, that was good. Um, sure, why not? Oh, it's installed now, but it doesn't necessarily launch up upon installation. And my icon still says NetBeans 8.1. You guys. Pin to taskbar. Drag. Oh, I can't even drag it. Can't even drag it. Literally unplayable. Alright. Um, there we go. Yes, import my stuff. There we go. Success. Other than the fact that it lost all my theming. I did at least remember where my project was at. So, I guess that's cool. Oh yeah, now it's going to go check for updates. Um, oh gosh. Where did my theme go? Where's my theme? Oh, gosh. I forget where my theme went. Uh, it's only been a year or something since I set it up. Theme. Great. Best search engine is... Oh, nothing found. Okay, cool. So it must be somewhere else. Editor... Sure. No, that's my Windows. I need to go to options, colors, fonts, Norway today. Um, okay, did that not pick it? Was that the one I was even using before? I do not recall. I had some night theme that applied not just to the editor portion, um, but to the entire GUI. City lights. Let's pick that. Is that going to do anything? No. Why would that do anything? Okay, let's pick Norway Today. And that Norway Today looks quite familiar somehow. Wait, next. Right, my mouse is not behaving the best. That's not the IDE's fault. Okay, so how do I get the dark theme going? So we got fonts and colors, but there's an overall appearance, look and feel, windows, metal, Nimbus, CDE. That doesn't say. Um, 
It doesn't say where to use things dark or not. Does anybody remember? I streamed this like a year or two ago saying how I was so clever about changing it. I guess we're going to have to look it up, guys. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch my own stream to figure out how I did this. I'm not even sure I indexed it properly that I could find it. Um, oh, we got a message. That's hidden back here. 17 plugins. Yes, import the plugins. Plugins that have not have been enabled and might be incompatible. Praxis. I think that was it. Yeah, we're going to pick that. Uh, import them all. Yes. All right. Restarting. Praxis was the one, I believe. Yeah! Perfect. We got our stuff back, guys. And that only took, like, five minutes. So, that was okay. Um, better five minutes than five hours. Although it should never have gotten to that point. But I was seriously getting to the point where I was considering... Um, trying to find the video of me installing the dark theme, but I'm pretty sure it's just Praxis um, plugin, which didn't automatically get pulled over from my 8.1, but okay, whatever. So we installed the Gradle uh, plugin. Okay, that folds up very nicely. New project, Gradle, Gradle, Gradle. Where's my Gradle? How do I do it? Python. Okay, um, you know, I might have to actually read documentation to figure this one out. Bummer. Um, uh, well, we're going to learn stuff today, I guess, or whenever I feel motivated to do this. Um, let's just make sure that the correct plugin's installed. Got all this stuff installed. Let's sort it by name. I thought I'd installed Gradle. Uh, maybe it didn't carry over. Let's try it again. Gradle support. Yeah, let's pick it. Sure, why not? Install. Sure. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, this requires Groovy and Grails. Sure, whatever. I'm patient. I don't mind. A second round of... Oh, I don't have the music up. Okay. Well, it's just going to finish unceremoniously. Okay. Self-signed. I get that. Let's continue. Restart. Restart number whatever it was. All right. But now for real, perhaps, maybe it's installed. So far, I've been able to do this almost entirely with the mouse. Um, it'd probably be faster if I knew everything I was doing and did it from a keyboard. Um, probably be faster if I knew everything I was doing. We'll start with that. Gradle! Nice! Okay. Creates a Gradle project, which is a root project of other Gradle projects. Okay. So, yeah, I could always learn stuff as I need it. I think this is all still uh, very Java based, but hey, capabilities there. We'll experiment with that at a later time. Uh, let's see. I do still have some time remaining. Um, so, what now? Um, well, maybe now I actually tidy up what I've done so far. Um, so let me pop open a window here, log in uh, to the thing. Um, what was it? Is this it? That was not it. Is this it? Okay. Somehow, let me 
got two browser windows open. Let's um, make that one browser window. Got some notifications here. We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but before that, let's go to my stuff. Where's that? I, I just forked a repository fishnet. Um, so I was going to show off, look at my commit history. Um, Watkins anti-chess solution work in progress, work in progress. Print this during initialization. Um, so, very dramatic stuff, really. Um, so I'm going to squash all three of these together, say that I've done some initial development, and then PR it over and expose that to the community. Although, since he's right here, I could just ask, what do you think of this code? But he might not have the time to, I don't know, immediately look at this. And um, this commit history looks kind of sad. It's better to tidy up the history, I guess, a little and then submit it. Because we're not intending to keep that as part of what we're doing. Um, so let me formulate a proper pull request. Um, I don't expect it to get accepted right away, but it'll give us some basis as to where we are. Um, and to what extent I should put more effort into this or not. <laughs> um, so, get reset, wait, and get squash. Um, no, I know that's a command. I use something quite like it. Uh, squash my last X commits together. Get merge squash. If I want to write the new commit message from scratch, this is going to suffice. Oh, head tilde 3, not head um, uh, the caret 3. Get status. Um, so. Can ignore the fact that I've modified build stockfish. Yeah, let's go back three commits. Get status. Um, get commit. Integrate Watkins um, anti chess solution. Um, No, Mark Watkins is less formal than Watkins. Let's do it that way. Um, during our for analysis. Um, get push my branch or my fork to my branch, which is Watkins. Um, okay, that'll work. Um, let's go back. So now we've got 505 commits plus this one. Or 605 commits plus this one. And this one I think is interesting enough to pull request over. Just get some review, feedback, whatever. Get a discussion started as to what are even the requirements for this and is this something anybody's interested in and yeah. I know it was fun to do it just for the sake of me learning some Python and figuring out how to 
integrate all the stuff together proof of concept. Um, um, so, how do I put this? Uh, this is my initial attempt at integrating uh, Mark Watkins. Actually, could um, anti chess tree server. Um, into um, Krishna. Um, or analysis uh, such that um, Stockfish is um, okay. Let's provide my motivation for because Stockfish opening moves and evaluations may be accurate. Um, because nodes can be used to reflect complexity of a solution, which actually I think is my top motivation. Um, I had one other than just having fun with it. Um, let's see. Um, is that how you specify it? There's a way to, to link to another. Um, I'm going to look this up. GitHub markdown URL other repo. Uh, GitHub relative link in markdown file. Um, repo, blob, master, that, that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get the full URL and stick it there. Because um, this is not helpful. <laughs> User slash repo is the syntax. Reducing server costs. Analyses may be Watkins um, um, is faster at providing known. Watkins is efficient at providing known solutions. And their complexity. Complexities, I guess. Uh, oops. All right. That looks accurate. Oh, well, this all reduces to one thing. goes without saying that this is my initial attempt. Um, this is an initial attempt to integrate 
and makes no attempt at calculating the exact um, mate, calculating DTM, just the nodes of um, the solution. Indicating how complex a solution is. Just that uh, instead using mate um, minus 500 to indicate white is winning. And at most 500 moves. There we go. Cool. Hi. Um, so what I did, uh, let me close this tab, close this tab. Um, so what I did here is I took some tools that already existed, um, tools that perform these analyses of uh, chess variants. Um, one that tells you what's the best move for every game in the opening, uh, or what's at least the simplest road to victory that's known so far. And um, another tool that just uses the Stockfish AI to analyze a game and calculate um, who's winning or make some rough estimation. Um, and I took a, uh, tried to integrate these tools with each other. So, um, so now you can see that the first part of the game is all analyzed by the book, uh, the Watkins, Mark Watkins, anti-chess solution. Um, so all that was done simply by looking up all these positions in a, in a database. Every one of these is already known to be winning. Um, and I made that uh, lookup accessible through this kind of um, um, service uh, where um, the server asks the client um, uh, to go analyze the game and provide some evaluations back. And now we've got those. So that's what I just achieved here. Um, so unfortunately you came right at the tail end of me showing exactly what this is about. Um, you'll have to catch the video on demand um, to get more of the details of what was involved in this process. Um, but I'm at least glad that I can demonstrate this and show that, um, I guess, I'm not sure I'm able to demo it one more time. Um, well, let me go over to the official site. Sorry again for this blinding light. That was not my intent. Chrome just presents a page transition in that way. Um, oh, I have to log in. One second while I pop this out so you don't have to see that. Let's sign in. Uh, I think this might sign me out of my other instance. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so we're logged into Lee Chess. Let's go back to where we were here. And now request the analysis. 
And you can see on the site, um, you can, well, maybe I'm just making that up. I thought you could look up these positions in a book here. Apparently not. Um, but, yeah. You see that it goes one step at a time, coming up with an evaluation for every position. And it doesn't necessarily know that these positions are completely winning for white. Um, whereas, yeah, what I've got here locally now recognizes that move through 10, or through move 10, white is totally completely winning. Yeah, we're taking some pretty advanced tools and smashing them all together to do even more advanced things. I'm just glad that I'm integrating the tools and not writing them, because writing new car code is challenging. Reusing code can be a bit less challenging. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad to at least have a proof of concept showing... Um, here we are. Well, that's move 10. What was I looking at here? Move 1. So we could scroll back. We got our same position. And this graph is shaped a little bit differently here because um, Lee just doesn't know that White was totally winning until this point. And then played a move which was less than perfect, but perhaps still good enough, but nobody knows. Um, so, yeah. Proof of concept achieved. And to be fair, I did get a lot of help. Um, yeah, so thanks to Niklas and everybody else. Um, it's been a good productive session. I was able to finally get my UI going. Um, was able to demonstrate that indeed, not only when you're playing against the engine, could you make it capable of using the book, although I'm not electing to use the book because that's no fun, but you could have the engine just play from the book the entire time. Um, which would be unfair. <laughs> that would be a forced win from any position, um, or at least from the start position, and anything you can do against it would lose. Uh, there's no need to play against the computer to discover that. Just go read the book. Uh, playing against the computer should still continue to play against it, but yeah, proof of concept is there. So. Ah, um, I guess that's it. It's been a fun little adventure. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, maybe come back with uh, another game. We'll see. I do have a few uh, items to attend to here. But anyhow, uh, for anybody who's stuck with this through the whole thing, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you next time. Uh, take care.